Hi everybody, today I've got a new plugin for you and some of you might have seen it before because Mike did a preview video on this on his channel. Let's talk about Reaper. That was for you, Mike. So let's have a look at the plugin. Hey John, you can't have a new plugin without a bass player present. Well, Adam, that's why you're here. You are the bass player. All right, so I'm the bass player. Where is my present? Then you'll have to put some kind of splash screen or intro or something in here, and then I'll start. Hey kids, Adam here. Today there are two presents. One that you care about, one that I care about, that you might care about. The first one is this guy. Let's try to get the light out of there. The second one is the brand new plugin from John Matthews at Toucan Studios called Base Station Series 2. Now this is a pre-release that I have. It is not a full release yet. It's coming soon. Uh, so I just want to say the caveat, if there's any issues or any things that I run into, uh, part of me doing this video is to help John figure out some of these issues. So that said, let's uh, jump over to Reaper, take a look at this thing. All right, here on Reaper, before we start the plugin video, let me just play a little riff, and this is the clean bass with no effects and no plugins or anything. This is just straight in a main interface. I'm not even using, using my DI that I normally record bass with. Uh, just to get an idea of both, you know, the original tone of the bass, and uh, you can listen to the first recording of this riff that you're going to hear about 100,000 times in this video. Here we go. <laughs> Now let's take a look at this plugin. So it uh, is a series two plugin, which means the first thing is you can resize this to any size you want. I'm gonna make this pretty big here. Um, there's also a menu over here. There's a bunch of stuff you can do where whether you want the plugin to be processing on playback on recording or on stop. There's a group feature, which uh, is featured in a lot of John's other plugins. I'm not gonna go into it here. Uh, there's a scaling, automatic scaling or no scaling. You just saw the automatic. And there's the fast comp. Now what the fast comp is, is it's a either a pre-gain, which means a base before it comes into the amp, or the post-gain, meaning after you set the gain and then before it goes into the rest of the amp. I'm gonna leave this here on post-gain and uh, I'm gonna turn it off here actually, but we'll see that in a second. And then there's a show info help. It tells you all your things you can do. Most of these things are uh, very sort of standard on all of John's plugins. There is the routing. It goes, you know, what you would expect in an amp, gate, pre-effects, amp, cabinet mic, and post-effects. Uh, and then you can see that in the pictures here. So um, what I'm going to do first, you will notice as soon as I turn this thing on, The volume is a little bit low. That's because there is both a pre-compressor and a post-compressor on. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn those off. Now you could adjust this a whole bunch of different ways. You could do output gain, you could do makeup gain, you could do uh, pre-gain, you could do, you know, whatever you wanna do. But I found it, the volume is fine when you turn both the compressors off. I'll get into the compressors a little bit later with some, you know, kind of slap lines or something like that. First, let's take a look at the amps. There are three amps and three cabinets. I'm assuming the amps and the cabinets go along together. They are not labeled, but if you know anything about bases and base amps and things, green and black is kind of a traditional uh, Trace Elliott type. Um, this orange, especially this orange circle, is kind of a giveaway for a Mark base. And then uh, my good friend Mike from Let's Talk About Reaper did a video on this recently. John put a card here for his video if you want. And this looks and kind of sounds like a Marshall amp. Um, I'm assuming the cabinets match. I don't really know. I think it's, you know, if he would put the names on here, he'd probably have to license them. So let's just pretend they're like a no name cabinets um, or no name amps. So go back to uh, these. I'll do a little sound sample. I'm just gonna keep the microphone uh, the same. Uh, and again, this riff. Now go to the uh, 
orangish mark base looking thing. And then we'll go to the Marshall-ish looking thing. And you'll notice this one has distortion on it. I think it's a Marshall guitar amp. You know, maybe even a... Uh, something like that with this amp. Um, I am going to go with the Mark bass that sounds closest to this tone that I'm looking for, but I will say that all of these controls are the same. You can tell that, you know, they look the same. And uh, you can mix and match amps and cabinets. I actually like the Mark bass looking cabinet as well. So I'm gonna leave it on there. Uh, they are, they have things that you would expect in an amp. There's a gain, if you turn all the way down, it's quiet. If you turn it all the way up, it will probably clip. Yeah, we won't do that. We'll turn it maybe halfway up or so. Has a little bit of grid in there, a little bit of, of distortion. And then if you want to go back to the default, I'll hit control and click the button. Uh, there's a bass knob turning all the way down, kind of turning on it all the way up. And I'm not going to do all the way up. You know, pretty, pretty boomy in here. Um, mids, I like to push my mids a little bit. Um, but if you're doing a you know, reggae or even a slap bass, um, you want to scoop the mids a little bit. If you want to push them like I kind of like. Uh, we'll leave that at back in the middle. And then treble, take all the treble out. You kind of have this like old time. Or if you put them all the way up, it's gonna hiss a lot, but you get the, uh, almost like the Marcus Miller slap if you wanna go for it. And that's not Marcus Miller, but uh, you know, whatever. And then uh, I'll put in to match uh, if you want to match your whatever you're doing in here, especially if you have the compressor on. I'll mess with the compressor real quick. Uh, you'll notice the lights go all the way up to negative 15. I found it about halfway up, it really kicks in. And then you'll have to do a bunch of output gain to match. Um, I kind of like this all the way off and I kind of like the output gain just there. Uh, at the end of the chain then there is this LA3 style compressor. Um, you can, you know, a nice view meter here and it's the same thing. This is gonna have everything in the amp stack, including the cabinet, the amp, the microphones, all the effects that you see down below, we'll go through those. Uh, and then you can compress all of that at the end. Um, and that's, you know. And then you can do makeup gain here as well. And uh, we're gonna turn this all off. We're gonna pretend that we didn't just clip everything and uh, move on from here. <clears throat> So uh, next section, there are microphones. There are seven microphones. I do not know all the names of these microphones because I'm a bass player and I put my cord into the amp and then let the sound guy deal with that. Or my own recording, I use a DI. Uh, but this one looks like SM57. This one looks like a, a black microphone, large condenser. This one looks like a different large condenser, maybe a Lewitt style, although it's probably an older style than that. This is like the D112 or... 212, the, the sure kick drum mic that people use. This looks like uh, one of the droids from Star Wars. This looks like some kind of weird spider thing. And then this looks like uh, one of these like um, rocket launchers. I don't know if that's really it. I've been playing around with these. Uh, if you look at Mike's video, he did all these different microphones. I'm gonna stick to this one because it, it kind of looks cool. Um, there also is a move microphone, which moves it from the center to the side, so. And then moving it. Adds a lot of mids. Uh, each microphone has its own characteristics. When it comes out, play with them. I'm not gonna bore you. I've already, I'm already sick of this riff. Um, let's move on to the effects. The effects are cool. Uh, the first effect, actually the first effect I wanna talk to is all the way on the right. And in the order, uh, they go left to right. 
Um, so you can see all the effects and then the amp and then the end compressor. Now you can move any of these you want. So if you want to put the amp before all the effects, I don't know why you would ever do that. You can. If you want to put this compressor before everything, that I could see why you'd want to do. You can do that. If you want to do things like um, move a distortion at the end of the end of the uh, chain or the beginning, you can do that. Uh, a lot of different possibilities here. But the first one I'll go to is all the way on the right here. It's the DI mixer. Um, what this is, is it, it has a crossover and you can do low or high DI and you can mix in both the DI and the wet mix. In this case, the wet mix is going to be the effects. So like if I turn on just this wah here uh, and you, it doesn't click like a real pedal would. Oh wait, maybe not. Uh, but you can see the red light on. Listen to how this sounds. because it's 100% wet. So it would be the same thing if I go over to the DI mixer, I turn the dry mix down, or the DI mix down, the wet mix up. Uh, a little bit with the crossover in there, but what I wanna do is I wanna pit the wet mix all the way up and the DI mix, which is the original signal, um, just halfway, you know, just straight up and down, and then I get. Then we can mess with the frequency here. I kind of like it a little bit in the three-ish range. It's not an envelope filter that I thought it would be. Um, it is more of a uh, just a wah if you would have the wah and you were changing the thing. So you could actually maybe I, I don't even want to say this out loud if it's not true john i'm sorry you could automate the water to kind of move up and down um i'm hearing a little bit of hiss here so i'm going to go into the gate function which i kind of skipped if you click on this gate drop down or anywhere here it brings up this uh, gate it will do a detect so if you leave it completely silent don't make any noise you'll notice all the noise went away out of the output signal um and now Sounds pretty much the same. If you want to change it, you can put these all the way down and that will get rid of all the, uh, turn the gate off and this uh, light over here will turn off that as well. Uh, we don't need that. Actually, we can just leave it there. I don't, I don't want to really cover up this cool toucan symbol, but we'll leave it on the screen to let you know it's on. Uh, next effect here is the distortion. Uh, and actually the wah, there's two styles. There's the DCB and the MRL. I don't know what that stands for. Um, Crybaby and Morley. I don't know, I'm not a guitar. We don't use wah pedals on bass. So I'm gonna turn that off, go to distortion. This one has two, a TS, which I'm assuming is a tube screamer and a, a doom screamer. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that's some two different kinds of distortion. Uh, just their default settings here. DS one. Seems to me that uh, the TS is more of a tube screamer overdrive and the DS is more of an actual distortion. So for the EQ filter pedal, it is an EQ, EQ pedal. It's a one band, uh, I guess this is parametric style. Um, I'm gonna turn the DI mixer off so you can hear it and I'm gonna turn the pedal on here. Let's say I wanna cut out a bunch of like nasty boxiness at uh, somewhere between, you know, four, 300, somewhere in there. What is this? 36. Um, I want to put the cue up pretty high and then I'll just play a, a uh, couple notes here. Actually put the gain up so you can hear what it's, what it's emphasizing. And then I want to cut it. But let's go on to the cool effects like the phaser. Uh, you can mix this one in. Uh, you can change the rate, the floor, the ceiling, and the feedback levels. Uh, you can get some really crazy. Standard phaser pedal. I'm sure knowing John that he's modeled this after 
an actual phaser pedal, maybe an MX or a, actually an MX, it's green, so MX would be orange, but uh, maybe he just chose different colors here. But I, I, he'd probably model it after a real pedal. Um, and it, you know, it does all the things you would expect a phaser pedal to do. Flanger pedal is the same. It's a more of a, uh, I call a flanger like in between a chorus and a phaser, just a different kind of effect. You got the depth up there really high. Um, that sounds pretty good. I do use a flanger on a number of things. I've used it on bass. I've used it on guitar and keyboards. I've used it on vocals even. Uh, and knowing that this is in here would be a good go-to um, pedal to go to. Uh, chorus. There is a stereo drop-down button here that should change between stereo and mono, but it's not. Um, John, you may want to look at this. Uh, the other buttons still change, but the stereo and mono don't seem to change. Oh, there we go. Maybe there's like one pixel you have to click on for it to go. I don't know why you'd want to do a chorus and mono though. Because it's really the whole purpose of it and turn the depth down so it doesn't sound like aliens here. The whole point is, of chorus is the big is a chorus. You want that in stereo. Um, so those are the uh, effects pedals. Again, this DI mixer, since we're not using it anymore, we can turn it off. You can do a lot of really cool things here if you wanted to do a like a phase distortion. Um, you could turn the distortion on. You could turn the phaser on. <laughs> And then if you wanted the phaser before this distortion, you could just click and drag this over. Um, and you get that effect. I'm going to turn this off because it's pretty annoying to listen to. Um, but that that's one of the things you can do with all these pedals. And then, of course, you can, if you don't want any of the pedals there because they bother you by the looks of them, you can click the X and get them out of there. That way you don't accidentally click on something. So before I said, uh, let's work on like a slap tone. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's try to dial in. I'll, I'll use this same amp. Um, I kind of like this one. I mean, you know, the other ones are there, they're, you know, it's green. Um, in fact, let's use the, the trace to do this. This one has more of a, more of a scooped mids anyway. Uh, first thing I want to do is put in some pre-comp or fast comp so I can get uh, some of the peaks on the way in so they're not hitting the, uh, you know, the, the amp too hard. A little bit more. All right. Um, bass, I probably want to cut back a little bit on. Mids, I probably want to scoop a little treble. I want to pump up a little bit. Um, maybe a little bit makeup gain. And the way out, I also want to do some peak reduction. Let's see if this... Little bit of makeup gain there. Maybe not that much. You notice the makeup gain is touchy. That's really, really big compression in there. Yeah, a little bit more trouble. Um, I actually want to bump the mids back up because this amp seems to scoop the mids a lot. Let's, uh, for fun, let's add in this flanger here. Let's 
let's try to get a kind of a distorted uh, rock based sound. So I'm going to do reset to factory defaults here. Um, let's, we'll stick on the, on the Trace Elliott one. Let's go to this back to this microphone I was using. Um, add in a little bit of pregain. It's a five or so. These things were popular for rock because they scooped out all of the mids. Um, I don't really like that as much, so I want to add some more of the mids back in. Maybe here's where I'd use the EQ pedal. Kind of bump some of those mids up. So I like this plugin. Um, anyone who's been following my channel for a while knows that I'm really not into bass sims or bass amp sims, that I mostly go, you know, bass into my interface, which is a Aguilar tone hammer, which kind of has its own preamp and stuff in there anyway. And then I go right into the, uh, right into Reaper and I just start mixing the bass and getting it, you know, song good. If I need to add grit, I can add grit there. Um, when I play live, I use pedals, so I'm not using really any grit or anything on my amp. Um, but I think this is a great solution for those of you who are doing recording at home, don't have an amp you can play through and want to get some different sounds. The Trace Elliott sound sounds pretty on point. It sounds like they did back in the day. The Mark Bass one, I think I like the best because I like more of the uh, the funk kind of sounds and I can get more of those out of there. The Marshall one seems to be more of a novelty if you want to dial in some you know more distortion or grit or something like that. Uh, John, I think you have a hit here. Um, Looking to uh, looking forward to messing with this uh, when it actually gets released. Maybe I'll do another video on my channel. Uh, until next time, have yourselves an amazing uh, until next plug-in time, and we'll talk to you soon. So that's it for today. Hope you have fun with the plugins, and bye bye.